lu Hello everyone Welcome back to another video with me, Alifia Nadira Or you can call me Kia So actually, this video is for my group project slash assignment slash experiment which is the steam fair project 2021 yes i know my youtube channel is full of project presentation videos don't worry you all i'm also starting to get bored by these video assignments because my phone's internal storage is screaming right now my phone's This video will be divided into three sections. In the first section, we are going to present our science objectives. In the second section, we are going to present our math objectives. And the last section is going to be the most important or like the highlight of the STEAM Fair Project 2021, which is the song composition. So stay tuned till the end to see our parody slash cover slash song composition. Before we start into the first section, just a reminder for you guys that we have our own webpage as a part of the Steam Fair project. This webpage is created to display our progress, results, and discussion of our Steam Fair project, which is investigating the effects of environmental conditions on tomato seeds germination. It also contains frequently asked questions and the profile of our team. So if you're curious and interested to visit our webpage, kindly check out the description box down below because I'll be putting the link right there. We're hoping that this webpage will be beneficial to the audience. Thank you and enjoy the video. Reproduction is one of the fundamental characteristics of all living things. Each kind of organism has its particular method of reproducing. But all of these methods fit into one of two categories, asexual reproduction or sexual reproduction. In this video, we are going to focus on explaining sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is the process in which new organisms are created by combining the genetic information from two individuals of different sexes. In sexual reproduction, the parent organism produces sex cells called gametes. Eggs and sperm are examples of gametes. Two of these gametes join and their nuclei fuse. This is called fertilization. The new cell formed by fertilization is called a zygote. The zygote divides again and again and eventually grows into a new organism. Firstly, let's take a look at the characteristics of insect pollinated flowers. Insect pollinated flowers have large conspicuous petals often with guidelines. Insect pollinated flowers are often strongly scented. They often have nectaries at the base of petals. Insect pollinated flowers have anthers inside the flower where insects have to brush past it to reach the nectar. Insect pollinated flowers have sticky or spiky pollen grains which stick to insects. Lastly, they have quite large quantities of pollen made because some will be eaten or will be delivered to the wrong kind of flower. Now, let's take a look at the structures of insect pollinated flowers. The male part of the flower is called the stamen and is composed of anther and filament. The female part of the flower is called the pistil or carpel and is composed of stigma, style, ovary, and ovule. In addition to these reproductive structures, flowers possess several other support structures. Those are petals, sepal, and peduncle. Stamen, the male part of the flower. Anther is the pollen-producing organ of the flower. Pollen is the male gamete of a flowering plant. Filament is a slender stalk supporting the anther, makes the anther accessible to pollinators. Pistil, the female part of the flower. Stigma is the sticky, receptive tip of the pistil that is responsible for catching the pollen. Style is the tube-shaped connection between the stigma and ovule. It elevates the stigma to help catch pollen. Ovary contains ovules. Ovule is the structure that contains the female reproductive cells. After fertilization, it will develop into a seed. Support structures. Petals are brightly colored modified leaves, which function to attract pollinators. Sepal is the outer covering that protects the flower when in a bud. Peduncle is the stalk of the flower. Let's talk about discrete data. Discrete data can only take on certain individual values. 
Discrete means counted. Discrete data is often represented using tally charts, bar charts, or pie charts. Examples, number of eggs in a basket, number of kids in a class, number of votes in an election. Continuous data. Continuous data comes from measuring and can take any value within a given range. Continuous means measured. Continuous data is often represented using histogram. Examples, water temperature, volts of electricity, time taken to run a race. Now let's talk about frequency distribution tables. Continuous data is displayed on frequency distribution tables in classes. Classes are a range of values with clear boundaries. To estimate the mean of the data set, the midpoint x for each class is used. The mean of the frequency distribution data is not the exact average, it's only the estimation. Outlier is a value or data that is significantly different from the other value or data and can affect the central tendency. The number of seeds that have germinated on day 7. Test tube 1 has 2 seeds that have germinated. Test tube 2 has 0 seeds that have germinated. Test tube 3 has 5 seeds that have germinated. And test tube 4 has 2 seeds that have germinated. Calculate the mean of the data. Mean equals to 2 plus 0 plus 5 plus 2. Then divide by 4. So 9 divided by 4 equals to 2.25. Calculate the median of the data. First, you order the numbers from the lowest to the highest, and then find the middle numbers, those are 2 and 2. So 2 plus 2, then divide by 2. 4 divided by 2 equals to 2. Find the mode of the data, the mode is 2. Lastly, calculate the range of the data. So the range is 5 minus 0 equals to 5. And here is the bar graph. Cumulative frequency. The cumulative frequency distribution is the sum of the class and all classes below in it in a frequency distribution. All that means is you're adding up a value and all of the values that came before it. It is the running total of frequencies. Here is the cumulative frequency distribution table for the length of the shoots that the seeds have developed on day 7. To seize the seeds for this experiment, starts on the first test to that lacks oxygen. Lacking water enters all conditions, reason. Lacking heat is the fourth test to poor Jonathan. So we place the mug under the bright sunlight. We add a cool boy walk through to the first test tube. Let the second test tube with no water at all. Just wonder will these seeds germinate? Then our school is sent to a daily journal. Even in the web page until 10 p.m. Going us out to check for our tomato seeds. Nothing changed, we felt sad, take a rest, almost stressed And so we checked the mall, seven days, that's enough We added some to water into the test too And same goes to the fourth test tube that was in the fridge We saw no sign of germination And we'll keep wondering and wondering and wondering and wondering Will these seeds germinate? On the fourth day, they started to grow Just like we saw on the given video What is it like when the shoes grow longer? Now that it happened, our stress feeling might go 